Hi guys, welcome to the Epic Aesthetic. You're watching High Intensity Training. This is vlog number nine on the B split of my back routine. For me, my traps are not big enough and my back thickness is not thick enough. Um, fortunately, I have pretty good width, so it means I can put a lot of my, I guess, lat width exercises on the back burner. So that's like your pull downs and things like that. And I instead start to concentrate a bit more on shrugging and a bit more in rowing. So to kick off, I'm doing barbell shrugs using a 2-2-2 two, two, two cadence, two seconds up, two seconds squeezing really hard in the top position, followed by a two second negative. Um, the main thing with this exercise is just to make sure you go slow, make sure it's the muscle doing the work and you're not jerking the body around too much to get the weight up and go to failure. If you feel like adding additional intensity work, for shrugs in particular, I prefer to do a static hold at the end. Um, so you'll see me have a brief rest just to get my energy back, move some lactic acid around, and then I'll lift the weight up quite quickly and I'll squeeze it for as long as I can in the top position. Roughly about 10 seconds is my limit and then it gives up. But what I'm trying to do week to week is not necessarily improve in this intensity um, technique I've added at the end. I want those reps in that initial first set to failure to tick up week in, week out, so that I get bigger and stronger and move up in weight. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing is targeting my lat width. Um, I'm doing stiff arm pull downs, which isolate the lats. Um, a little bit better than pull down movements where your biceps come into play. And what this does is pre fatigue the lats whilst keeping the biceps out of the exercise. So when I do a set of these six to 10 reps to failure, 424 cadence, I run over as quick as I can to the chin up bar and I start doing chin ups with a 424 cadence. So basically, that'll bring in your biceps, which will be a bit fresher, help you get to the top position of that chin up squeeze for two seconds, lower for four, and that's gonna to toast off whatever's left in your lats. Um, for most people, a regular chin up, especially for beginners, will probably be sufficient to, to build both the back and biceps, but um, I've especially found as I've moved towards the advanced stage that my biceps especially, they give out long before my lat muscles do, and that, that holds back my development. So since doing things like pre-exhaust for the back with these stiff arms and, and chin um, pre-exhaust combinations, my lat width, which is already at a pretty good level of development, has continued to, um, to grow. Um, so it's a good technique to try pre-exhaust. Obviously you've seen it in a lot of my videos before, but I just like to keep bringing up the point that, that it's a good exercise to do especially if you've got weak links in the chain like your biceps giving out on you. Um, so it's really important in that sort of bottom position when your hands are by your knees there is to really squeeze the hell out of the muscle. That two second hold is basically working the fibers as intensely as possible with full load and um, you get a lot of benefit out of that in terms of stimulating growth. So as you can see, nice slow reps here on the chin ups. 424 cadence as I've said before. Um, with the rep range here, I basically, on the compound part of any pre-exhaust, aim between three and six reps. And because chin-ups are quite difficult, it's, it's very hard for me to say get three in a row or four in a row. So often what I, I find myself doing is I'll get one or two reps, do a quick rest pause of six breaths, do another single, another quick rest pause, and maybe do an additional set. So I've done, you know, four, four or five reps, but with rest pauses in between. And this is a rest pause style that's probably more typical of, of what Mike Mentz's recommendations were for the technique where you're doing maximum singles followed by sufficient pauses and trying another maximum single again. So it's something um, I've sort of borrowed and adapted in terms of rep range um, from Metza, but a lot of it is just trial and error. Um, over the years, I've sort of come to the conclusion that that's a good strategy for pre-exhaust, that three to six rep range, be it straight out or with rest pauses in between. Um, so a back thickness exercise here, the dumbbell row. 
One of my favorite exercises, mainly because it's um, isolateral. You work one side and then the other. I'm just gonna show you one side today. And for me, like I said, traps and upper back and, and thickness in the upper back are my weak points. So I actually pitch myself at quite a high angle here and that keeps the focus more on the upper back instead of the belly of the lat muscle. So if you have a more uh, flat, flat angle, as in you're in line with the floor, um, it'll probably give you more development in the lat overall. But with this higher pitch, um, you'll find it shifts onto your trap muscle and, and rear delts a lot more, giving you that thickness. And that's what I'm trying to target by doing it like this. So for the average person, I'd probably recommend a, a shallower angle on the um, bench, if not flat. But for me, I have to target what my weak points are. And I've found that doing this exercise has really brought up the traps and the rear delts and the thickness in the upper back. I've still got a little bit to go, I feel, to, to catch up to my lap width but so far the changes I've made have been effective. Um, so apologies for the form here. I'm not sure whether the camera itself is angled a little funny um, or I'm holding up one of my shoulders a bit higher than the other. I think it might be a combination of both, but again, that's why um, recording yourself tra training is, is very beneficial even if you're not trying to be famous on the internet. Um, you get to see uh, periodically how your form's traveling and you can make adjustments. So I need to sort of think about where I position my shoulders and my shoulder girdle when doing exercises. And um, in previous videos you've seen, I've often made this mistake when doing um, hammer presses and things like that. So it's something I have to be really mindful of just to, to keep my shoulders down and compressed um, whilst performing these exercises so that I can be even um, I think the reason that I'll get problems where, where one arm will drift up is because on my right hand side it's, it's my weak, weak, weak arm, I'm a left hander and obviously anytime you've got a weak side, um, which is natural and typical, but um, anytime you've got a weak muscle your body will kind of sometimes automatically do what it has to do to get the rep done, but as conscious volitional creatures we have to um, override our instincts and, and try and keep our form as, as pitch perfect as possible. So that's something that, that I'll have to work on as the weeks go by, but I'll keep it in there and I'll talk about my mistakes because that is just as beneficial to people as showing perfect form every week. But one of the things I like to do with this exercise which targets the rear delts is, is pre-flex your lats so that they're not drawing back during the exercise. They're kind of in a, in a slight static position. And that way your rear delts um, will take a lot of the work, which is what you're trying to specifically target. Um, so to finish off, just a little bit of bicep work. Honestly, for beginners, I, I almost want to make the claim you don't need to curl. and. Uh, at the moment, I'm, I'm developing a, a high-intensity training online product and I really want to sort of put my suspicions to the test and do my own beginner routines where I don't train biceps at all to just see what happens because I, I really feel that, you know, if you're doing, if I drop some of the pre-exhaust stuff on the back and do just say straight chin-ups, I'm going to get really good bicep stimulus. I'm going to get really good bicep stimulus from rowing and stuff. So um, in the next few weeks as I, I finish off this program, I always like to set myself a, a time limit in terms of weeks or cycles and, and see it through so that I can measure progress. Um, but after that point, I'm going to, um, I guess, put myself through my own beginner routines for this product I'm developing and um, just see what happens to my bicep development um, sans direct curl work, um, I actually suspect I will get away with it and be able to claim that I don't even curl whilst having large biceps. Um, so that'll be something interesting for me to try. But this is some machine work which I've spoken about, I think, in the last video or the video before. And I'm liking machine work. I feel like these machine curls are superior to a barbell curl because um, the strength curve is pretty consistent all the way through due to the, um, I guess, uh, unique 
shape of the cam. So if you can see where the um, sort of rubber, uh, what would you call it, the belt that goes around that cam there, it has a, a weird kind of oblong arced kind of shape. And as that moves through the exercise, it changes the strength loading in a way that is, I think, a direct opposite phasing to your curl motion. I think that's the correct terminology. Forgive me if I'm wrong. And what that means is, is from, from A to B in the movement, it feels relatively the same in terms of muscle exertion. If you do a free weight curl, it's easy to start with, incredibly hard through the mid stroke, and then the top position almost has no loading. But machines are excellent in um, creating that good, even strength curve. So thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe, and that'll encourage me to keep making you good content. Thank you.